the first realm of intimacy is the realm where you know about God. You may not know God, but you know about God. When you started your journey with God, you knew about God. You carried the book of Genesis. You read. They say God created the heavens and the earth. You say what? They told you how God delivered Israel from Egypt. Wow. You were overwhelmed. That realm is the lowest realm of intimacy. You can know God at that level, but don't have intercourse with God. At the realm where you know about God, it's good because it will do two things for you. Number one, it will excite you. Number two, it will inspire you. The excitement and the inspiration is what will draw you to God. You want to find out? Did they say he healed the sick? Ah, I, I have back pain. Does he heal the sick? Are you sure? They will read two, three more. Okay, if he heals the sick, then I'm here. Heal me. You are knowing about him. You are coming close because what you know will draw you close to him. So this level is not bad. As much as you can hear the stories of God, hear it. In fact, God told Moses that the things he has done for them in Egypt, he should recite it to them from generation to generation. He said, let these acts of God become a memorial because a generation need to hear about God in order to be inspired to come close to God. So the first level of intimacy inspires you to come to God because you are knowing about God. You know that God is merciful. You know that God is powerful. Evangelists are very skilled in communicating this dimension. They can meet a murderer. The person is just coming from murder. They say, they will, they will look for a story and connect the story until they make the, the, the murderer knows that even in that state of murder, God loves him. It's, it's a skill. You need to talk to people about God before they can be drawn to God. It's the first level of intimacy. But the highest thing that will do for you is to pull you to God. Is to pull you. And so, this dimension has a way of articulating it. The first way is to read. If you don't read about God, you will not know about God. It says, search within the book of the law and read. It says, none of these things are fair. It says, the mouth of the Lord, it has spoken it and his spirit has gathered it. If you don't read about God, you will never know him. And so, the culture of the fathers of old and what they taught the body of Christ is the discipline of sitting to read. But in our generation, they tell you, don't worry, we have fasted for you. It's a lie. The person can raise the dead. It will make you know God. They will clap for him, but you will never know God. Because the fathers that gave us the landmark, they showed us that the first way to grow in God is to read it. You will read it for yourself. I know we are in a generation of audio Bible. When you hear audio Bible, you'll discover you heard 120 of what was said. Because you can be reading audio Bible and talking with your friend. Nothing is happening to you. You will have to culture yourself to sit down and read that book for yourself. If you want to know about God. But those cultures are lost now. Because we are more interested in dancing in church. The feast of the tabernacle. Israel comes to sit down and they read the whole Torah for them. And everybody reads it. In fact, your masculinity in Israel is verified if you can recite it. They know that that's the first layer of knowing God. That's why in Ephesians 4.13 he says, Until I come, give attendance to read it. I'm saying this because even this first level, there are many Christians who are not there. You will say a whole story in the Bible. They will say, who said that? <laughs> you are talking about Balaam. They are, they are opening Luke. They are looking for Balaam in Luke. <laughs> because they have not read. You say, ah, oh, the battle of Amegido. Because he sound Amegido. They will go and open Leviticus. <laughs> they are, they are because even knowing about God, they don't know. So those ones, they may call themselves Christians. They may be born in Christian homes, but they are godless. They are walking in darkness. Because the highest level of darkness, I told you is what? Is a state of godlessness. They are in darkness. Those are the kinds of people Jesus said in Matthew 6, 23. He said, if the light in you is darkness, he said, then great is that darkness. Because they know nothing about God. So the first way to activate intimacy is to read. If we took a census here, how many of you have read the Bible cover to cover? You will be shocked. And I didn't say you'll be shocked because of the number of people. I, I'm saying you'll be shocked because of the number of pastors. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. If it's the brethren, you can understand, but you'll be shocked. If you are a Christian here and you have not read the book, you don't know about God. It's a, it's a pathetic state. But many are there. I'm showing you why we are weak. Why? Even when we talk about the dimensions of God, 
it looks as if we are preaching impossible to gospel. You know, now, the kind of gospel they preach is the gospel that the psychology realm, the soulish realm can handle. When you start talking about the real supernatural thing that the patriarchs of hope carried out, they will say that that is not possible. That's not a, that's that, that thing you are saying won't work. Tell people how to sow. Because when you sow, you will receive back. The one that is the universal. That's the one we do now. We, are, we fell into time. And time trapped us like a net. The second way to know about God is to hear his messages. He didn't only tell him to read. He said to also pay attention to exhortation. When you carry the phone of a believer, the playlist is littered with 90% of the song, they are secular music. And then when you ask him, you say, is it a sin? No, it's not a sin. But your heart will become a courtyard of demonic festival. They will, they will play there for a long time. You don't know why you keep falling to masturbation. And when you wake up, you say, we are many. You are not many. You are the one who is fought. They fall from fornication. After two weeks, they fall again. After two weeks, they fall again. And then you ask it. They say, oh boy, no easy. It's easy. You are the only one that's hard to. Because the people stand, they are not standing because they are strong. They are standing because they are helped. And you don't know how to access the help of God. Any little pressure, they compromise. They came to the office. They said, if you don't lie, you will lose your job. They say, oh boy, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. Before you ask, they lie four times. And they say, please, me, I want to keep my job. Because their job is their life. But they didn't read that there were three Hebrew boys. That the king told them, if they don't bow, they'll be cast to the, 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 the furnace of fire. And they say, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. If it's on this matter, make the fire hotter seven times. We will not bow. And it was not a bluff because they made the fire seven times water and they threw them inside. But they didn't bow. They say our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't save us, we will not bow. You will not find Christians today who are able to lose their job for righteousness sake. It's no longer found. Because you don't know what those who called the name of the Lord before you did. If you know that some were thrown to the lake of fire, you will know that your job is nothing. They say Paul and Barnabas, these be the men that have started their lives for the gospel. But you have to listen and read to know. The reason your work with God is shallow is because you have not heard what others did. You came, you say you're an apostle. You walk like this. Go and check the apostles of scriptures. When you know what they did, every day you ask God to help you. I'm a prophet. You are a prophet. Do you know who a prophet is? A prophet. And when you check prophet's text message, text message is with seven ladies. He has appointment with all of them. And what they are discussing, you can't hear. Meanwhile, in the days of old, when a prophet entered the city, he comes with the government of righteousness. If he cries, even the king will tear his clothes and repent. Meanwhile, our own prophecy now is, your name is Martha. And the next thing, Martha will chat you later. And you didn't read about prophet Jonah that entered Nineveh. And when Jonah cried, even the animals repented. You know who is a do you know who a prophet is? A prophet stands on behalf of God. He's a deity. He's a prophet. Think prophet is about the gift. But you, you, you have not read. If you have read, you would have known that a prophet is God's symbol of righteousness to a generation. When God wants to reveal righteousness to a generation, he sends a prophet. He said, John cried. The whole of Jerusalem and Judea went to him. And they repented. Even the Pharisees, their heart was caught. Because a prophet showed up. Uh, yeah. The second layer of intimacy is to know and apply the principles of the kingdom. The man who is functioning by the principles of the kingdom has gone beyond just knowing about. He is now putting it to work. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12, he said, whoever uses milk is a babe and is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He said, but strong milk belongs to them who are of full age, who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern. That is sound judgment. They now understand the ways of God. And I showed you an example the last time I was teaching here. I said, for example, when you read Genesis chapter 1, it said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. That is a story on one layer. But on another layer, there's a principle underneath. The principle underneath reveals to you that 
Challenges are possible. But number one, challenges are not designed to destroy you. Challenges are designed to help you manifest your God element. So when God saw problem, it wasn't a problem. It was a platform of manifestation. So when you run into a problem, it's not fear that is the response. When you run into a problem, you begin to ask, what is the principle? What is the law that makes this an advantage? Because gravity is present, but it's not a, an impediment to aerodynamics. Because if you apply the law of lift, gravity will exist, but the plane will still fly. Without the law of lift, it will be impossible for a metal that massive to float in the air. But when you move from gravity to lift, gravity becomes an advantage because when the plane wants to trust, it is gravity that pushes it. So when you understand that there is a dimension of God that solves all problems, problems no longer scare you. Problems become a school to activate the God element in you. So when you see challenges, you find out, what am I supposed to do? In John chapter, chapter 6, he preached to 3,000 people, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And after three days, they were hungry. And they said, these people are hungry. If they are going home, they will faint on the road. And Jesus said, give them something to eat. And they said, give them. Even one year's salary can't suffice. How can we give them something to eat? The Bible said in John 6 verse 6, that himself knew what he should do. He's a master. He understands how the realm works. So a Christian will be disadvantaged if he doesn't understand the principles of the kingdom. The reason many remain poor is because they are living like the world system. They don't know the principles that run this kingdom. So when they make money, they keep to themselves. They want to keep more and more. But in this kingdom, he said there is him that scattered it. Yet, he is increased. The liberal soul is made fat. He that watered shall by himself be watered unto. He said, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, shall God cause men to give to you. The only time the power that causes men to give to you is activated is when you give. That's why he said, give a portion to seven. Give a portion to eight. You know not the evil that will come upon the earth. He said, in the, in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. He said, for you know not the evil that will come upon the earth. But here is a Christian. He has money and he hides it. He said, they want to take my money. Meanwhile, if you were in the world, it would have worked. Because in the world, you can support it with stealing. In the world, you can support it with fraud. In the world, you can support it with manipulation. But in this kingdom, fraud, stealing, and manipulation is forbidden. So you need the invincible finger to activate it. But you have to study the scripture and find out what the principles say. So the way you access principle is not just by reading, it's by studying. So in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, study to show thyself approved. I know you have read the story, but it's time for you to examine the story. What is God saying that I'm not saying? And as you begin to study, comparing scriptures with scriptures, a point will come, the missing links will begin to connect. And then you know, this is not just a story, this is a code given to you to live a life of advantage. So a believer is not supposed to be disadvantaged because captured in the oracles of God are principles that make for his advantage. But unfortunately, he has not studied. And because he has not studied, he has not shown himself approved. So he's a victim. Some people carry the Bible. In five minutes, they have read 20 chapters. <laughs> My brother, that book is a code. They don't read it fast. <laughs> they read it meditatively. They read it with prayer. They read it asking for help. So the way you, you journey from stories to principle is to study it. Sometimes the, the key is in a word. You read four chapters, but one word carries the key. So as you are reading, sometimes you have to search the meaning of the word to find out what it says that you don't know. When it opens to you, then you are enthroned. Principles is the second realm. And principles are important because they reveal to you the faithfulness of God. So you know that when you do this, as surely as the Lord liveth, it must come to pass. So a man who functions by principle knows God at a higher level. He doesn't just admire God, but he can depend on God. Because he knows that this principle has worked before, this principle will still work, and this principle will forever work. So that man knows God at a higher level. The first man is just, ad he admires the power of God. The second man believes in the power of God. So the relationship level is higher. But the way to access principle, number one, is to study, to show yourself approved. Number two, is to ask God to open your eyes. I told you already, truth is not discovered, it's revealed. No matter how you labor, you will never find it until he reveals it to you. So while you are studying, you are asking him to show you what you need to know. Are you seeing what 
I'm showing you here. So the first layer of intimacy depends on your willingness to pay the price to read. It also depends on your willingness to pay the price to sit down and listen. The second layer of intimacy depends on your willingness to be on reading, to study, and to search. The reason people never grow in God, they assume they will just wake up one day and know God more. You would. You have to pay the price to search God out in the book. Find out how his realm works. Because God's kingdom is not only a person, it's a realm. And there's a way that realm works. He said the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them because they know not how to enter the city. There is a way to enter. And you will search it to find it. The second layer of intimacy depends on your willingness to ask him to reveal it to you. You don't ask him to reveal it, you will struggle for a long time. And when you begin to put principles to work, you will yet discover that there is a higher realm. Because there is a realm of personal relationship. Because as beautiful as principles are, they are universal. I told you already. The principles you are, you are applying, if a Hindu person apply it, he will get the same result. If a Muslim apply it, he will get the same result. If a sinner apply it, he will get the same result. So as beautiful as that is, because it reveals to you the faithfulness of God, it reveals to you the consistency of God, the immutability of God. Beyond that, there's a realm of personal relationship. Because God is not just here to answer your prayers. God is here to have a relationship with you. And so when you grow from principle, you come to a revelation of Jesus, a personal revelation of Jesus. When you study the scripture in the Old Testament, every patriarch had a name he called God. When you read the, the Old Testament, you, you want to preach, you say, El Shaddai, Saboat, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh. You don't know that all those names were caught on the mountains of intimacy. Men who met him personally. So it is their revelation of God. When a man catches a revelation of God, he becomes a custodian of that dimension. So the reason Abraham and his children cannot be poor is because they found them shall die. So even in the dry land, Isaac will sow and receive the hundredfold reward. Isaac will dig a well, there will be water. Collect that well from him. If he moves, the water will dry. So what keeps the water there is not the soil, it's the presence of Isaac because of his revelation of El Shaddai that causes the fountain to bubble up. But men in our generation will not pay the price to have a personal relationship with Jesus. They think they can call on him when they have a problem. I told you already, life is a relationship. You've got to know him personally. And when you know him personally, you will now discover that there is a realm superior to principles. A man who doesn't know Jesus may need to carefully obey the principles for certain things to work. But a man who knows Jesus will discover that in addition to principle, there's an aroma called favor. A man who knows Jesus will discover that in addition to principles, there is a flavor called mercy. So he comes to a place, probably he's not the most qualified. The principle insists that the most competent should have it. But when he shows up, even though he's not the most qualified, favor begins to knock on the door. I came with him. And because I came, he must be choosing. And that man is choosing, even himself does not know why he's the one because he came with favor a man fails he's supposed to be condemned but suddenly jesus said i died for him i died for him and so mercy prevails over judgment why is that so there's a realm superior to principle i told you that was why jesus multiplied bread the principle is for you to what to sow before you can reap but when jesus comes he tells you i'm sending you to a field where you bestow no labor so even though sowing and reaping is eternal there is a place in god where you can reap where you did not labor that's why we are here today. Some of us are preaching today. We just showed up in town. People come and they are blessed. It's because some intercessors probably labored in this land and insisted that in the 20s, God must raise voices that will bring Jesus to this city. You, you now come. When you see crowd, you walk into the hall like this. You say it's because we are anointed. If you know how many lineage of intercessors pay the price that you are gliding on, you will understand that Jesus is a system. Do you access this realm of Jesus? Number one, you must believe because every realm has what it takes to access it. To know Jesus, you must believe. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it said, With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. I'm showing you this, they look simple, but this is why we fail. Because you may leave this hall after this meeting and you are confronted with a problem, and instead of leaving your head and entering your heart, you will remain in your head and labor for two weeks 
and see the futility. Because it's not just hearing it, it's your ability to catch it that makes the difference. You can live here now and you, you, a problem meets you. Instead of tapping into your spirit and believing that Jesus is your defense, you will now begin to quickly put logistics together. When you put a thousand and one logistics together and it doesn't work, that's when you will now start coming back to Jesus. This is why many people struggle. When you understand how to activate the realm of Jesus, you will know that believing is superior to doing. Your doing is validated to the degree that you believe. If you have not believed that you are doing, that labor will be in futility. So to activate the realm of Jesus, you have to believe in your heart that he is the son of God, he died for your sins, and he was raised from the dead for your justification. If you believe that he is the son of God, what it means is that you are tapping into an economy that is beyond the earth realm. So even if the earth fails, your source is not earth. Your source is from beyond the earth. If you believe that he died for you, it means what you receive from God is not a privilege, it's a right. I wish you understood it. He says, as many as believed, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God. You know, when God blesses you now, you will think, ah, you are so lucky. There's no luck in the realm of God. Before God can bless you, he will first of all give you the right to participate in it. That's why you can receive it, because his realm is a legalistic realm. You have the right to be the son of God because you believe that he died for you. So everything that made it impossible for you to justly live from the realm of God, Jesus took it to the grave. And then you believe he was raised from the dead for your justification. What it goes to mean is that his life has been activated on your inside. So things may not be working. Before you look around, you will look inside. Because you now know that within you is the God factor. And so most times when we pray, what we are trying to do is to search into Christ and find out the answer that is required for the specific problem. So praying in tongues is not a religious thing. It's the same way an archaeologist digs into the earth to discover. So when a man is praying, if he has understanding that not just the answer is in him, but the God of the answer is in him, nothing can move him anymore. So you can't throw that man off balance. When he enters his room, what he will come out with, you can't believe it. The man can enter his room defeated, but when he comes out, he comes out as a more than a conqueror because he has searched into Christ and everything God has is in Christ. But it takes the revelation of the resurrection and believing in it for you to function like that. Now, that level of intimacy, many have not reached there. That's why you see people today, they run from pillar to pole, helter skelter. A man can go and sit down and wait for an apostle for four weeks. He can go and sit down and wait for a prophet for two months. But he will never go to his room and spend three hours. Because he thinks his answer is an external. He doesn't know that the day he received Christ, all the answers he's ever looking for is within. And because he doesn't know, he will never invest on his inside. You will find that man all over the place. If you shut him down and say, search here, he doesn't know there is any value there. So he will never invest in what? A man who understands that he has come into another level of relationship and Christ is in him. 90% of his life is inside. I can assure you that many Christians are shallow inside, but they are bogus on the external because they don't know. It takes so much to believe. To believe, you have to pay attention. You don't hear things haphazardly and believe it. So this realm of intimacy will require you to separate yourself. Because you will not hear it in the market and believe it. Because your mind will fight it. You want to grow in that revelation, you must pay attention. I know you are a banker. I know you are a lawyer. But every day, you must separate yourself and find out what is the new thing he's saying that is coming from here. It's a breaking news. And if you don't grow in the revelation of Jesus, your life will be haphazard. Things will happen to you and you will live based on luck and chance. When you access this realm, three things will happen to you. Number one, life will be activated in you. That life activated in you is what overcomes the world, not your brain power. Number two, faith is activated in your spirit. In Romans chapter 12 verse 3, it says, unto every one of us is dealt unto the measure of faith. So the faith you require to live a glorious life is already there. But it will take what? Continuous and progressive revelation of Jesus for you to grow in that faith. So if there's any mountain challenging you now, the mountain is not the problem. Your ignorance is your problem. Because the moment you step into a higher revelation of Jesus, 
faith will mount up. And when faith mounts up, it will immobilize the mountain. The third thing it will do for you is that it will activate authority in your life. Because authority is a function of revelation. Jesus sent out 70 people and they were babes. He gave them power in Luke 10, 17. And as they went out, they returned celebrating. And what did they say to him? He said, the demons were subject to us in thy name. So they went with the name of Jesus. They carried that name as a weapon. The reason you go out and come back defeated is because of what you don't know. The day you know your authority in Christ, you will begin to wield it. The revelation of Jesus activates life. The revelation of Jesus activates faith. And the revelation of Jesus activates authority. When you see Christians struggling, the problem is not their struggle. The problem is their ignorance. That's why I said in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 that my people perish. Not because I'm powerless and not because they are helpless. They perish for the lack of knowledge. So when a, ma a, man's, a man's life and experience is actually a report card of his depth of intimacy. Because when that man begins to know God more, the circumstances will begin to change. Because that revelation will bring life. That revelation will activate faith and that revelation will provoke authority. Why am I teaching you these things? Because you can't continue living your life depending on others' benevolence. Most times we call on God and God doesn't show up. The reason is because he has already shown up. And when he showed up in Christ, he deposited everything you need. Your job is to pull it out. The fourth realm of intimacy with Jesus is the realm where men literally begin to participate in the spirit realm. It's not only God and angels that come here. Men are also invited to come there. Because there are certain levels of legislation and spiritual governance that will not be possible until we begin to appear in the councils of heaven. In Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, before John could bring the testimony of the apocalypse to the body of Christ, he had to be caught there. Because if you don't see it and participate in it, you can't talk about it. Even if you say it, the atmosphere can appear. Because there are things that can never be taught. Hope you know, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9 and 10, John who knew Jesus for three and a half years? The Bible said John was the one that put his head on Jesus' chest. When he entered the realm, the Jesus he met there, the level of glory he carried, Jesus had to reintroduce himself to John. Because the glory that you receive when you hear a message is different from the glory you see when you appear there. Because earth is limited. There is, there is so much of God that earth cannot handle. So no matter how we preach Jesus, there is a weight of glory that earth can handle. If that weight enters the earth, earth will dematerialize. Hope you know that when Jesus appeared by the voice of the archangel, he said the whole elements of the earth will melt. So there are weights of glory that earth can handle. So no matter how you preach Jesus, it's only a measure of Jesus that earth can receive. If God wants you to interact with glory that should bring certain level of government and governance to the earth realm, the only way is that you have to be summoned up. You have to be summoned. That's why John knew Jesus on earth. But Jesus had to be introduced to him in heaven. There are different glory realities. Come up, Peter. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. And he said, when he entered there, he said, I saw a white throne. The realm has changed. This one is not the revelation of the love of God. This one is the government and the judgments of Elohim. If you bring the judgment of God to the earth now, the earth will end. That's why when Jesus read... Isaiah 66 in Luke chapter 4 he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord the government have not yet been activated but there are measures of that government that needs to come into the earth realm to minimize evil and to advance the kingdom for you to tap into it there will be some you will be summoned you must be summoned and so when he appeared there he didn't meet Jesus the love he met Jesus the king and he saw 24 elders and he said they were bowing their faces casting their crown he saw the four beasts. He had come into the council of the Godhead. When he returned from there, he said, I write unto you, the church of Ephesus. Then you don't talk to people anymore. You talk to territories. You talk to generation. Because you are bringing a weight that a man can handle. When he came down, he didn't talk to anybody again. The ministry of John to individuals ended when he was summoned. I write unto you, Smyrna. I write unto you, Philadelphia. I write unto you, he was talking to to territories because at this time the weight that came is for territorial legislation if our revelation of jesus is only what is preached we are still limited a time will come when we have to be summoned because the kingdom is not just about life 
the kingdom is also about the fellowship of the spirit the kingdom is also about the will of the father and these three harmonizes in the realm as a unilateral government only when you come there can you bring the, the three at the same time so there's a realm of intimacy where you begin to come up here come up here you don't just hear messages you don't just receive revelation you come up here from time to time when you see the church being overrun it's because men have not joined it when we begin to join it, like Ananias you can sit in Abuja like this no terrorists will come here even if they pay them half of the wealth of the world because they know they can't enter I've told you several times John was causing havoc in Jerusalem Paul named Saul the moment he stepped into Damascus he was struck why? there was a gatekeeper Jesus himself had to send him to Ananias if this man doesn't permit you you are finished there are levels of intimacy Christianity is not about a message. It's about a person and the reality of that realm. When you begin to walk with Jesus, you will discover that a time will come, Jesus will cease to be a man. Jesus will become a world. That's why he said he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's in that knowledge. And in Ephesians 1 verse 3, he said all spiritual things have been given to you, but they are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there are places in Christ Jesus. And when you begin to journey with Jesus, he begins to bring you to those places. There are certain places you enter. When you come out, you become an expression of a dimension. I can come here and pray for the sick. The sick are healed. There are certain people who don't pray by faith. And they don't need healing anointing. They have become embodiment of the dimension of healing. Whether they pray or not, the sick will be healed. There are different levels. When you enter a realm in the spirit, you become an expression of that dimension. You become a witness of that dimension to your generation. So when God is calling us into intimacy, he's actually trying to make out of us what the world can only but call a wonder. The way to access this realm is to live on the altar. I'm not saying to pray and come back. It's the way of Eden. Every man who was ever caught up, the altar became his home. He said, I was in the spirit on the last day. I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And as I turned, he said, come up here. I'm not talking about those who visit and come out. I'm talking about those who literally have become mobile altars. They tarry there until they know no other place for the altar. Our Christianity is more on the platform now than on the altar. That's why we can't affect our generation. There are men that must make the altar their habitation. Even when they are in the office, they are in the spirit. You know, in Galatians 5.25, they say, if you say you are in the spirit, walk in the spirit. And the way to make the altar mobile is to tongue around the clock. It takes sound for you to be elevated. That sound can be tongues. That sound can be worship. But for you to function in this realm, there must be a sound playing in your spirit. Two, four, seven. That means you have become a man of the altar. You are walking, you are speaking in tongues. When you are not speaking in tongues, you are singing a song in your spirit. Constantly a river is flowing. When the, when the momentum of that sound increases, you are caught up. It takes labor to walk with God. And if we don't walk with God now, then it's unfortunate. Because the Bible said, Enoch, who was seven after Adam, walked with God. Genesis 4.24, and he was not. The fourth man had already mastered the technology of working with God. We have lived for aeons. If we don't know how to work with God now, then there's a problem. But if you make it a life, you will become an embodiment of the dimension that is shown to you. Hope you know that when John went to heaven, he wanted to write it. They said, this is not a message. Don't write it. It's only meant for those who come here. That level of intimacy is not teleported to people. You have to go there to find it. He said, I wanted to write the voice of the seven thunder. He said, do not write it. This one is not a message. When Paul was carried in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2, he said, I know a man 14 years ago. Whether he was in the body or in the spirit, I can't tell. But that man was carried to the third heaven. He said, I heard things that was unlawful to be uttered among men. Because when you enter that realm, you cease to be a mortal man. You become an embodiment of a dimension. You can no longer be known after the flesh. You will be known after the dimension that you represent. Meanwhile, if the body of Christ will come into safety, then men will cease being men. Men will become embodiment of dimensions. So when we gather like this, it's not a gathering of believers. When we gather like this, it's a gathering of dimensions and dispensations.
So when we sit, some men will represent healing. Some men will represent judgment. And some men will not just represent dimensions. They will represent dispensations. So some men can come into your meeting. Because they come into your meeting, you will begin to know the things that will happen 20 years to come. Because they have gone ahead of you. They are 20 years ahead of that generation. So when they come into a gathering, they bring the future. And when you are going through crisis and you meet such men, they have the power to take you out of your crisis and bring you into your tomorrow. Because they represent dispensations. That's what these men carry. And that's the level of intimacy. Ah, time is gone. The Holy Ghost will reveal the rest to us. The fifth realm is the realm of the voice. In John chapter 10, verse 27, we say, My sheep know my voice and they obey me. When you have traveled, you will live by the economy of the voice. There's no uncertainty anymore. Time is gone. If I continue away, I will undermine the message. Bow your heads and pray. If our generation is able to reach the fourth realm alone, we will bring the deliverance unto Jacob. The prayer point is simple. Hear this. All of this journey requires hunger. Ask the Lord. Put a hunger in my spirit. Just ask that prayer. And for the first time, forget about everything. Just ask the Lord. Listen. If these things happen to you, you will become a God in your generation. 